Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Gasmus Guys, and today I have here is a Chinese slash North Korean tanker helmet. Now what is pretty cool about this helmet, it is a direct copy of the Russian 1930s, 1940s tank helmet. Now I do not know the designation of that helmet, and not many people know the designation of this helmet. This helmet is actually very hard to find. Now, it was a part of my collection for five years, and uh, I'm letting it go to help me uh, fund myself during the coronavirus. But also, too, I'm letting it go because, look, this thing has been sitting in storage for uh, two years now. It hasn't been on display for a very long time. So my opinion is, look, it needs to go to someone else, and I've been told it's going to a very small museum in Minto, so that should be cool. Now, this helmet has some basic features, so we'll go over the features. It's a standard crash helmet that you would see used by, for example, the Soviet Union and other Eastern European countries. And as you can see, it literally is a crash helmet. You've got a temple pad, three pads that go from the crown all the way back to the neck. You've got a neck protector to protect you from the sun as well as cold weather, depending. This is a summer helmet, by the way. This is not a winter helmet. If it was a winter helmet, it'd be black or it would have internal uh, fur and warming stuff. But mind you, this helmet will be very warm on your head uh, in tropical areas. Like, for example, if you're battling the Japanese in Okinawa, or if you were fighting, let's say, in the Philippines or whatnot, this would be a very sweaty thing to wear. But then again, anything would be very hot, because, you know, it's a very hot area. I'm currently in Australia, and I know that feeling. Now... As you see, it's got a few adjustment straps for depending on your head size. So you got an adjustment strap up here, and you've got your chin strap, another adjustment here, as well as a place to clip up that neck protector if you don't want to get caught on something. Because the problem about old style tanks is you got lots of pieces of equipment lying around inside your tank. Last thing you want to do is snag yourself on something. So uh, I'm talking about tanks like the T uh, T26 or the BT series tanks, which is Primarily what these helmets were designed to use, or were designed to be used in, were those older style 1930s tanks. Of course, these helmets were used on and on. Like, the North Koreans used these helmets up until, like, the 1990s. I could be wrong about that, but... Oh, another country I forgot to mention was these helmets were also used by the North Vietnamese during the Vietnam War against American troops. So it's pretty cool. This helmet was used by three different nations, all against the U.S., so, for example, you had China, who fought against the U.S. during the Korean War using this helmet. You had the North Koreans, who used this helmet during the Korean War. And then, during the Vietnam War, you had a surplus of these being used by uh, tank drivers. So, pretty tank drivers, tank commanders. You get the idea. Any tank that doesn't need communications, you would see these in. So, like, early 1940s, 1930s. You get the idea. So, I'm going to take Mrs. Head out. Thank you. We're going to look at the internals. Now, internally, as you can see, the pattern is very similar to the Russian winter uniform. It's designed to, I believe, either increase heat or disperse heat. I forget why this pattern is used, uh, because I've never had to use it. And if you look here, very careful, let me see if I can get a good focus on it. There are some markings here. Now, you can't, unfortunately, we cannot see that. Um, it's gone. But if we look over here, we've got some red markings, which is old Chinese, or traditional Chinese. I could be wrong, could be Mandarin. But long story short, um, the funny thing about that was, during the Korean War, the Chinese and the Koreans used the Chinese language. So if you go to, this is a bit of trivia, if you go to South Korea or North Korea, and you look at buildings that were built before, so like businesses that were built before the Korean War. So you're looking at buildings made in the 1940s, the 1930s, or during the, uh, before the colonial era, when the Japanese took over Korea. You'll see Chinese markings. You'll see Chinese lettering on things. And uh, when I was in Hujan, I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly. When I was in Hujan, Seoul, there were a fair few buildings that had Chinese written on it, as well as the temples in Seoul. They had them as well. So pretty cool. I don't know what these markings mean. If anyone can translate that for me, feel free to. Let me get a better, let me get a better view on that. Yeah. The light's not helping. One moment. Yeah. Bugger. 
There you go. So there's one. There's number two. So I don't know what that means. It could be the manufacturer, but yeah, pretty cool. But yeah, it's a very simple helmet. I thought I'd show you. I've not seen any information on the internet about this helmet other than people believe it's a, you know, it's a Chinese copy of the Russian helmet from World War II. And obviously this one is not a Russian helmet. This is a Chinese slash or North Korean or Vietnamese used helmet. Don't know how it got here to Australia, but I have to say it's pretty cool. Nice piece of history. It could have been a bring back item or it could have been sold here as surplus or brought over from an ex-serviceman from any of those militaries. Because I do know a good portion of Vietnamese who live in Australia as well as Chinese. So you never know. This might have been given back as a gift. They might have brought it with them. So an interesting piece of history and surprisingly rare in the Western world. So, oh, another thing too. Uh, very interesting thing. So I've only seen one of these for sale, and it went up for, well, like $600 in the U.S., and it never sold. And, yeah. So, look, not many people are really interested in this, or that price is way too extortionate. But I have to say, very interesting piece of equipment. Oh, and one last thing. Let's go over the cushioning pads. As you can see, you got two on the sides, which is a bit different from later models. They don't have this. They have those big cone things that come out the side. And you got three main ones, two on the sides. So if you got, this is, by the way, this is a size small. I would put it on my own head and put on a gas mask and uh, videotape it. But it is a very tiny sized helmet. But, um, you yeah, know, this helmet would protect you pretty well in a smaller tank. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this quick video. Um, I thought I'd do this video before this helmet goes away off to Minto. But yeah, the person who got this, you know who you are. Hope you enjoy the helmet. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy this quick off-topic video. This is the Gas Mask, guys. See ya.